This mass is offered for Father's Day Novena. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may always re revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth of Manre, as Abraham sat in the entrance of his tent while the day was growing hot. Looking up, he saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to greet them. And bowing to the ground, he said, Sir, if I may ask you this favor, Please do not go on past your servant. Let some water be brought that you may bath your feet and then rest yourself under the tree. Now that you have come this close to your servant, let me bring you a little food that you may refresh yourself and afterward you may go on your way. The men replied, very well. Do as you have said. Abraham ha hastened into the tent to tell Sarah, Quick, three measures of fine, of fine flour, knead it and make rolls. He ran to the herd, picked out a tender, choice steer, and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Then Abraham got some curds and milk, as well as the steer that had been prepared, and set this before them. And he waited on them under the tree while they are. They asked him, Where is your wife, Sarah? He replied, There is in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah will then have a son. Sarah was listening at the entrance of the, of the tent just behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years, and Sarah had stopped having her womanly periods. So Sarah laughed to herself and said, Now that I am so withered and my husband is so old, I am to still to have still to have sexual pleasure? But the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I really bear a child all as I am? Is anything too marvelous for the Lord to do? At the appointed time, about this time next year, I will return to you and Sarah will have a son. Because she was afraid, Sarah this simple saying, I didn't laugh, but he replied, yes, you did. The word of the Lord. The Lord has remembered his mercy. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. 
the Lord has remembered his mercy. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy in his name. The Lord has remembered his mercy. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. The Lord remember his mercy. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to, Ab to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. The Lord has remembered his mercy. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus entered Carpena, Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I know worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too, I am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I said to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I said to you, in no one in Israel had I found such faith. I said to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go. As you have believed, let it be done for you. And at that very hour, his servant was healed. Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her and fever left her. And she rose and waited on him. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons, and he drove out the spirits by the word and cured all the sick to fulfill what has been said by Isaiah the prophet. He took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good. We heard already, be beginning this week, uh, the book of Genesis with Abraham's story. And this truly marvelous to hear how God called Abraham and, and asked him and gave him a promise. And we know that this promise will be fulfilled as we heard today. But before that, something that can amaze us all is how God called Abraham, and, a and he told him to abandon everything, to leave everything, and to begin to walk a journey. And Abraham, we know that's already nothing to lose because he didn't have descendants. He obeyed and believed this promise. And today, we see how truly God never deceived us, fulfilled his promises, and this is the fact that we hear today, that God always fulfills his promise. And we hear today also the visit of these three men or three angels who uh, visited Abraham and announced that they will uh, have a child. And this is the promise of God. God is fulfilling his promises. And this is what we need to experience that he never abandoned us, he never deceived us. Wherever he promises to us, he will fulfill because there is nothing impossible for the Lord. As we saw, Sarah was barren, it was all. And now 
we see that he's fulfilling his promise. There's nothing impossible. That's why she laughed. Laughed. But nevertheless, God will fulfill his promise. This is marvelous for all of us because this is what God will fulfill in us. Even though sometimes we think it's difficult, impossible, there's nothing impossible for the Lord. And this is also what we hear in the gospel. The centurion, something that um, called my attention is how this centurion was official, something um, important that he has served and sold his everything. And nevertheless, he humbled himself by asking to the Lord and begging to the Lord to cure his servant. Something that we see his humility. Not only that, but he was asking also, I know worthy that you may come to my house, but only said a word in my servant, we shall be healed. And this is amazing. And Jesus saw his humility because he humbled himself, asking, begging to cure his servant because he cared for his people. And now we see also for us also the same thing, asking for us what we need to do to humble ourselves, begging to the Lord to help us, to help. And this can be also a good way for us to enter during this day on, on our life with our family. If we have something, he, will, he can help us to all of us, okay? Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work in the hands, it will come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through the goodness we have received, the one we offer you, fruit of the divine and work in the hymns, it will come our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the, sacri the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that claims by its actions we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord, His day we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as with our then we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. May holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing to his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I know worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only said a word and my soul shall be filled. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you already have come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renew and nourish by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son. We ask, O oh, your mercy, O oh Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Have a wonderful day, everyone.